looking here, guys, these are your identities. Um, what you, the ones that you're going to be using the most when you go to do these things are these reciprocal identities and the Pythagorean identities. Remember, I told you the Pythagorean identities, we use those when we have squareds in them, right? Um, you'll use the other ones from time to time, but they're there just for you to look at. When you are simplifying trig functions, trig identities, Sine and cosine is generally the most basic, is what the directions will probably say. Simplify in terms of sine and cosine. So we're always looking to simplify to those two things. Ryan, you have a question? Ryan? No, no. Okay, you hit a button that says Ryan Crenty raised his hand. Oh, sorry. Just, no, it's okay. I just <laughs> That's good. Just do that in case, I mean, if you have a question, let me know. So, again, like I told you, if we were doing this in class, you guys would have these <clears throat> identities on your desk, and I would say, simplify. So, the other day, whenever I saw you last was, what, Monday? We did this first one. If I'm going to simplify in terms of sine and cosine, I look at my reciprocal identities, and I see that secant is the same as 1 over cosine. So, I write this as 1 over cosine of x times, since they're stuck together, and this is the cosine of x, and it just happens to be over 1, since it's a whole number. My cosine of x's cancel out, and I'm left with just 1. So this is what you'll have to do on your quiz, and you'll have multiple choice answers to pick your answers from. So if we look at here, cotangent squared x, cosecant squared x. All right, that's that would I would look at either of my trig identities to see if that helps me at all, and my... Reciprocal identity. So if I look at my trig identities, cotangent of x. You guys see that cotangent of x right here? If I move this 1 over here, it would be minus 1. I can rewrite cotangent squared x of 1 as cosecant squared x. Cosecant squared x minus 1. And then I have minus cosecant squared x. You guys see that? Does everyone see that? Now, if I look at this, this is the same thing as saying cosecant squared x minus 1 minus cosecant squared x. I have a positive cosecant squared x here and a negative 1, so they cancel out, and I'm left with negative 1. It's like a little puzzle. can be very confusing sometimes, I know. So I have sine negative x here, cosine negative x. So I look, what kind of looks like that? Well, that would be my even-odd identities down here. So sine of negative x is the same as negative sine x over cosine negative x is right here, <clears throat> same as cosine of x. So we simplified a little bit. We got rid of the parentheses. And now I can look and say, okay, can I simplify that more? Is there a reciprocal identity that has sine and cosine in it? And it is right there, tangent. So I know that this is the same as negative tangent of x right there. Same thing here over here, sine, and then I have secant. So look at, where's, oh, I got the hiccup, secant. Secant is the same as 1 over cosine. So I have the sine of x over 1 times 1 over cosine x. Well, if I multiply these, I get sine x over cosine x, and I look on my identities, and sine x over cosine x is my tangent x. So you're always trying to simplify, meaning make it smaller. If you look at my answers, my answers are all much smaller than the problems they begin with. Good morning. Can you say good morning? Let mommy's teach it. Ooh, you got your flashlight? Oh, okay, good. Oh my gosh, okay, good. Guys, can you give me one second, please? I'll be right back. When you were little kids, right, okay. Okay, guys, so look, in this example here, you're gonna have to factor a little bit. You can't, I, come on. You're gonna have to factor a little bit before you can simplify. Oh my gosh. Okay, come on. Okay. Can you guys see my screen? That's all I really care about right now. Yeah. Okay. And it's I'm sorry. matching that. It does match. Isn't that cool? Whoa. Whoa. This is going to be a great YouTube video for you guys to watch later. Um, okay, so if you look at A, A, I can't talk right now, girls, please. Do you guys want your iPads? Yeah? Yeah. Okay, Valentina, go get your iPads. 
Go get them and then mommy will put them on for you. They're little minions. Ay, ay, ay. They're precious, but I just need like 10 more minutes. Did 10 more minutes, okay? <laughs> okay. Here, can you get down? Sit in the baseball chair. Mommy will cover you up. Okay, so if you both notice here, they both have a tangent squared x. So if I factor that out, I'm going to take it out and put it out in front. Tangent squared of x. When I do that, when I divide out a tangent squared x here and a tangent squared x here, this becomes 1 minus, this is gone, so then I have sine squared x. <clears throat> All right, so we're a little smaller now. That's good. So now I'm going to look at my identities. Do you guys see here that there is a sine squared x down here? Yes? If I move this sine squared x over here, this becomes 1 minus sine squared of x. So in this case, you can simplify. You can substitute 1 minus sine squared x with cosine squared x. Okay, and that's how we got that. And then this is still times the tangent squared x. Can you please sit down on the floor for one minute? Don't get mad at mommy. Why? Just for one, just so I can write real quick. And then tangent, <coughs> if you look on your little sheet, tangent's the same as sine over cosine. So I can rewrite this as sine squared x over cosine squared x times, and then I have my cosine squared x here over one. And then what happens to my cosine squareds? They cancel out. So you're left with just sine squared of x. Are some of you sitting there just going, I have no idea what you're doing? Or not, okay. <clears throat> Killing me. All right, <clears throat> what do we do when we have four terms, guys? We group. So I'm gonna group these two, and I'm gonna group these two. So in my first parenthesis, I look and see that they both have a cosine squared x. I could take out of both of them. So when I do that, I'm left here with one cosine squared x, I mean, sorry, one cosine of x, minus one. And then here, I could take out a negative one, <clears throat> and this would be cosine x minus one when I take it out. All right, so now, guys, when we group, whatever's left over. No, can you just sit down for one second, please, and then you can get on my lap. Your headphones are right there on the floor. <clears throat> so you take what's left over, and it gets its own parenthesis. And this one comes out in front. So you have cosecant x minus 1. You have one of them. And then here you have cosecant squared x minus 1. So let's look at our trig identities. Is there something with cosecant squared? Yes, it's right here. If I move this 1 over here... I would have cosecant squared minus 1, so that would be the same as cotangent squared x. And then you have cosecant x minus 1. And you can leave it just like that. You don't have to go any further. If you wanted to change cotangent into sine over cosine, you could, but you don't have to. That's the hardest type thing that you guys would ever see. Um, here, <clears throat> these look a little more difficult than they really are, I promise. I have secant to the fourth, tangent to the fourth. This is like the difference of perfect squares. What will give you secant to the fourth? Secant squared and secant squared. What will give you tangent to the fourth? Would be tangent squared and tangent squared. Just different signs. So you have secant squared x minus tangent squared x secant squared x plus tangent squared x. And then from there, you can break it down into what our secant squareds and our tangent squareds look like using the Pythagorean identities. <clears throat> Everybody, are we okay? No? Yes? Look here. 1 minus sine squared. If I move this over here, this becomes 1 minus sine squared x, right? 
So I can rewrite this top as cosine squared x. Cosecant squared, if I move this over here, cosecant squared minus one becomes cotangent. So think about what cosecant and, and what cosine and, and tangent are, cotangent. So I have cosine squared x over, I can rewrite cotangent as cosine over sine. So this is cosine squared x over sine squared x. This is where we keep change flip. So I have cosine squared x times cosine over sine becomes sine squared over cosine squared. Cosines cancel out, you're left with just sine squared x. Secant squared, all right, where's my secant squared? Right here. <clears throat> Secant squared, I can move this one, because this is secant squared minus one. If I move this one over here, this becomes minus one, so then secant squared, in this case, is just tangent squared over sine squared x. Again, what we just did, tangent is sine over cosine. If you keep change flip, you have sine squared x over cosine squared x times one over sine squared x. Those cancel out. You're left with one over cosine squared x. One over cosine is the same as secant. So you can write this as secant squared x.